Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Red Hat Summit 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in San Francisco at Moscone West. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Red Hat Summit 2018. I'm John Furrier, co-host of theCUBE. This week, John Troyer, guest analyst. He's the co-founder of Tech Reckoning, an advisory and consulting firm around community. Um, and our next guest is Matt Hicks, Senior Vice President of Engineering at Red Hat. He's going to give us all the features and specs of the roadmap and all the priorities. Thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks guys. <laughs> He's like, oh, no, not. Um, <laughs> so thanks for coming on. Obviously, successful show for you guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, Paul Comier was on earlier talking about some of the bets you guys made. And it's all open source, so those bets are all part of the community, with the community. Yep. Um, but certainly there's a big shift happening. We're seeing it now with containers and Kubernetes really showing the way giving customers clear line of sight of where things are starting to fall in the stack. You obviously, yep. got infrastructure yeah. and application development all under a DevOps kind of concept. So, yeah. congratulations. Thank you, thank you. It's, it's been fun, it's been, I think Paul shared this in a couple, we started OpenShift in 2011, so it's, it's pretty cool to be here now, 2018, and just see how far that's come in terms of how, how many customers are using it, how successful they've been with it, so that's it's been great. You know, we always like to talk on theCUBE, we love talking to product people and engineers because we always say, the cloud is like an operating system. It's just all over the place. Decentralized network, de distributed computing. These are, these are concepts that have been around and a lot of the uh, Red Hat DNA comes from systems. You sell an operating system that you offer for free but also have services around it. Yep. It's, it's a systems problem as we look at the, at the, the cloud, cloud yep. economics. So when you go look at some of the product and engineering uh, priorities, how do you guys keep that going? What are some of the guiding principles that you guys have with your team? Obviously open source being an upstream project, but as you guys have to build this out in real time, what are some of the principles that you guys have? It's a great, it's a great question. I'll try to cover it on two areas. I think the first for us is workload compatibility, where you get down into the, building net new apps is great, it's fun, a lot of people can do it, and that's an exciting area, but customers also, they have to deal with apps they built over 10 plus years, and so in everything we design, we try to make sure we can address both of those use cases. Um, I think that's one of the reasons, you know, we talk about OpenShift and how coupled it is to RHEL and Linux, it's for that you can take anything that runs on RHEL, run it in a container on OpenShift, stateful, not stateful. That's one really key design principle. The other one, and this we've actually experienced ourselves, of the roles and responsibilities separation. We run an OpenShift host environment publicly. I joke, like anyone that gives me an email address, I, I'll run their code. And my operations team doesn't have to know what's inside of the containers. They have a really clear boundary, which is make the infrastructure infinitely available for them and know that you can run anything on that environment. So that, that separation, you know, when customers talk about DevOps and getting to Agile, I think that's almost as critical as the technology itself is letting them be able to do that. Yeah, that's been a real theme here at the show. I've certainly noticed, sure, there were technology demos up on stage, but also a lot of talk about culture, about pr process or, or anti-planning maybe, or uh, yeah. you know, helping people. The role of Red Hat uh, with OpenShift and the full stack all the way down, uh, is bigger now than it was just when it was just Linux. So I mean, yep. as you and your team, I mean, you're, you're engin in engineering, as you work with the, the open source communities, uh, surely it seems like you, you, you're having to deal with a much broader scope of, of responsibilities. Yeah, <laughs> no, certainly. I started in Red Hat when it was just Linux, and part of it is, you know, Linux is big and it's complex, and that's, you know, that in and of itself is a pretty broad community, but these days it is, it is we get to work with customers that are they're transforming their business. And that touches everything from how they're organizationally structured, how we make teams work together, how I make the developers happy with their rate of innovation, and the security team still comfortable with what they're changing. And I love it. Like it, it is, you know, and we're open source at our core. So I feel like I'm an open source guy, I always have been. You're seeing open source drive a much wider scope of change than, than I ever have before. Let's talk about functionality product-wise, because again, we interviewed Jim Whitehurst uh, yesterday, and we had Denise Dumas on as well on the REL side, and we talk about security, these things are going on, and with OpenShift and with Kubernetes and containers, 
it makes your job harder. You got to do more, yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. So talk about what does that mean for uh, you guys and how does that translate to the customer impact? Because it's more complicated. There's abstraction layers that are abstracting away the complexity. Yeah. The complexity is not going away, it's just being abstracted away. Yeah. This is harder on engineering. How are you handling that and what's your approach? So I've, I've looked at it as a great opportunity for us. So I've been working with Linux for a long time and I was a big fan when we introduced SC Linux. And for a long time, moving from traditional Linux hosting to operations teams wanting to turn on SC Linux, it's been a really tough climb. It's, it'll break things and they're not comfortable with it. They know they need that layer of security, but turning it on has been a challenge. Then go to C groups or different namespaces and they're not going to get there. With OpenShift, the vast majority of OpenShift deployments under the covers, we want run with SE Linux on by default, customized policies, everything's in control groups, containers uses Linux namespaces, so you get a level of workload isolation that it was unimaginable <laughs> you know, five, 10 years ago, and I love that aspect, because you start with a one aspect of security, you get much, much stronger. So it's our ability to, you know, we know all the levers and knobs in yeah. Linux itself, and we get to turn them all and pull them off. I want to so. put you on the spot. I want to, I know, and it's not an insult to, to you guys at all, but I've, I, we've heard some hallway conversations, you know, just in a joking way, because everyone loves Linux open source, but we, love, we all love that. But they say, um, nothing's perfect either. No software actually runs all the time great. So one customer said, um, said I won't say the name, when OpenShift when open fails, it fails big. Meaning, um, there's, it's pretty, very reliable, but it's taking on a lot of heavy lifting. There's a lot of things going on there. Because that's, because it's Linux, when it breaks, it breaks a lot. Yeah. Um, and you're trying to avoid that. But, but what I, my point is, is that this is, these are important components. How do you make that completely bulletproof? How do you guys stay on top of it um, so that things don't break? I'm not saying they do all the time. Just saying his comment was more of an order of a magnitude. Yeah, kind of thing. no. Well, I think it's, it's a couple of things. So we, we invested in OpenShift Online and OpenShift Dedicated, and those were new for Red Hat. If we're running hosting environments, so we could learn a lot of the nuances of how do you, OpenShift Online is roughly a single environment. How do we make that never break as a whole? A user might do something in their app and make their app break. How do we not make the whole break? The second challenge I think we've hit is just skills in the market of it's not necessarily an easy system. There are lots of moving pieces there. The deal with Azure and the partnership there Having managed service offerings, I think is really going to help users get into, I have a highly available environment, I don't have to worry about etcd replication of those components, but I can still get the benefits. And then I think over time, as people learn the technology, they know how to utilize it well, we'll see, we'll see less and less of the, it catastrophically failed because I didn't know I could make it highly available. Those are always painful to me where it's, That's you education. Know, yeah, yep. So, so Matt, there was, very, there was a clear cl conversation here, very clarity of uh, roles and responsibilities, even in the stack. I think even as recently as a year or two ago, you, we, people were having conversations about the role of OpenStack versus, versus Kubernetes, and you were getting kind of weird, like what's on top of what? Um, and even in terms of uh, you know, other parts of the stack, uh, I mean here, open, it's clear, very clear, you know, OpenStack is about infrastructure, OpenShift you know, on top of it, yeah. uh, and, some, and even um, in terms of virtualization, containers versus VMs. The conversation this year seems more clear. As an engineer and, a, you know, and an engineering leader, were the, did the engineering teams rolling their eyes going, well, we knew how this was going to work out all along, or did you all also kind of come along on that journey in the last couple years? I think seeing the customer use cases refine a little bit while education builds those has been great. We always, like, we're engineers. We like clear separation and what each product's good at. So for us, it's fantastic. You know, OpenStack is great at managing metal. My, one of my favorite demonstrations was using OpenStack Director to, on a, you know, boot machines, put OS's on them and leave OpenShift running and be able to share network and storage planes with OpenStack. Those things are, yeah, you know, they're great for me as an engineering lead because we're doing that once as well as we can. But it's nice in engineering if you get to optimize each side of the stack. So I think I have seen the customers understanding as they've done more with OpenStack, they've done more with OpenShift. 
they know which product they want to use, what for, that, that has helped us accelerate the engineering work towards it. You mentioned skills, uh, skills gaps and skills in general. How is the hiring going? Is there a new kind of DevOps rock star out there? Is there a new kind of profile? Is there pieces of the stack that you want certain skills for? Is there generalism? I mean, are the roles in engineering changing? You just add some color to that conversation around, you know, because we're talking about engineering now. It's just, yep. it, used yeah. be, it used to be called software engineering when I graduated college, then you became a developer. I don't know which one's better, but I mean, to me, this is real engineering going on, yeah. which is using software development techniques. Yeah. So what's the skills, skills yeah. situation? For us, I think, it, it is nice you're seeing a lot of gravitation to Linux at the host level and Kubernetes has helped just at the distributed system level. So obviously skills there play pretty well in general. I would say what we have seen is there has been a, a stronger increase in having operational skills as well as development skills. And there's, it's a spectrum. You're still going to have operational experts and algorithmic experts, but the blended role where you do know what it takes to run an application in production to some extent, and you do know some about infrastructure and development. I certainly look for that on our teams because that's where customers I've seen struggle for years and years is in the handoff and the shift between everyone can write functional apps, they usually struggle getting them into production. And it's really neither team's fault, it's in that translation. And these platforms help bridge that People that have some skills on either side have become incredibly valuable in that. So that that's where the DevOps action is, right? The overlay. It really is, yeah. So what do you think about network is networking, um, the networking growth um, with DevOps? So that DevOps has always been infrastructure as code. Hmm. In all countries, Stu Miniman and I always talk about, there's always the network that gets, gets the beat on the most. I need better latency. Yep, uh, yeah. And so networking, software-defined networking is not a new concept. Software-defined yeah. data centers out there. Uh, what's, and what's new in, in networking that you could point to that's part of this new wave? Two, two geeky things that might not have been noticed. It, one is the work we've done on Ansible networking has been stunningly popular to me. And that was just the simplicity of Ansible just needs SSH and a minimal set of dependencies. Most switches out there can actually, they have SSH running. And having automation of switches and the actual gear itself was surprisingly not unified. And Ansible was able to fit that niche where you could remotely configure switches. And, and that has grown and exploded. Because if you think of the, I'm going to do a DevOps workflow, but now I need to actually change routing or bleed something, you're often talking to switches. And being able to couple that in has been it has been fun to watch, so I've loved that aspect. The other portion, when we combine OpenShift on OpenStack, the courier work, which we've talked about some, is you know, OpenShift I often describe as it consumes infrastructure that OpenStack provides, and the one exception was usually the networking tier. It's like, we have to run an overlay network on it. When we run OpenShift on OpenStack, it can actually utilize OpenStack's networking to be able to provide that instead of doing its own overlay. That is critical. So at the, the policy scale. comes in handy there. Is that or configurations? Where's the where's the benefit? Uh, both on network topology. Which do you have two teams that are <laughs> building different structures that may collide in the night? So it gets it from two teams down to one. Got it. And then the second is just the knock controls and isolation. It's done once, and it's been nice for me in the engineering side where. We put a ton of effort in the OpenStack community. We put a ton of effort in Kubernetes and the OpenShift communities. And we're able to pretty nicely combine those. We know them both really well. So take, a, take us through uh, some inside baseball at Red Hat. What's going on internally within your group? I want to uh, probe on developer and software engineers productivity. Mm -hmm. If you quote DevOps works, the test is, the freeing up their time from doing mundane tasks, yeah. and you got cool things like you said about the network thing is pretty positive. Yep. This is going to free up some intellectual capital from engineering. Mm -hmm. So okay, if that's true, I'm assuming it's true, if it's not, then say it's not true, but if it sounds like it's probably going to be true for you, what are your guys working on? What's next? So can you share some, because you guys are doing your own thing, you're using your own software. Mm -hmm. Is that intellectual capital being freed up on the developer side? Are they doing just more programming? You've seen some more creativity. What's, what are they doing with that free time? Free time, extra intellectual All cycles. Are excessive. You know, Don't tell Paul you know, that he was up yeah. before me. Like yeah. Matt's team barely has to work anymore. Yeah. Yeah. They're, the, they're in clipping coupons at the beach. You know, <laughs> that's right. It's yeah. all running. We're busy. So, a good creative example, and this was 
think the second demo we showed, Red Hat Insights has been in the market for a while, and that was our, can we glean enough information from systems to get ahead of a support issue? And this year we showed the, it's not just known fixes, you know, we match it to a knowledge base article, but can we interpret fixes from peer analysis and you know, machine learning type techniques? That's a classic example where uh, we use the creativity and free time to say, you know what, that, that stack internally runs yeah. on OpenShift, running on OpenStack, using Red Hat storage, and we're applying some of you know, TensorFlow and other capabilities to do that. That was probably my favorite example at Summit where if we weren't getting more efficient in what we worked on, uh, we wouldn't have been able to stand up that stack ourselves, much less execute to it and show it live in yeah, yeah. Summit, doing the analysis across a hybrid cloud. But this is the whole point of DevOps. This is the whole purpose, being highly productive to use those intellectual cycle times yep. to yeah. build stuff, solve yeah. problems. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Not provision servers or networks. That's right, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. Thank What's you, the guys. priorities for you guys this year? What's the focus? Share, some, uh, share your plans for the year. Yeah, I, I think it's similar to the, the last thing we showed today. We really want to make customers feel like they can deploy hybrid cloud, whether it's compute applications, they have the services they need, down to storage, it works. They're on premise, they know we're going to have the best combination we can. It's, this year is a stay ahead of people on that, on that path, make sure they're successful with it. Yeah, we'll see you guys at uh, OpenStack Summit in Vancouver. Thanks for coming on, Matt Hicks. Thanks a lot, guys. Senior Vice President of Engineering Red Hat. I'm John Furrier. John Furrier, stay with us. We're day three of three days of live coverage here in San Francisco at Red Hat Summit 2018. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>